Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ number 13, the knife series where I get to answer all your questions whether they're big or small. Today we got some fun stuff to talk about, some field sharpening tips, some alternatives to the Civivi Elementum. We're going to talk a bit about uh, the best knife steels out there. Let's do it. All right, folks, before I get into the questions, just a quick thank you, quick big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. We're trying to hit that 100,000 mark before the end of the year. So if you like this series, like the other stuff we do and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and uh, hit that button if you would. Thank you very much. Uh, and once we hit that, we can go back to our, uh, go back to me not bothering you about subscribing to the channel for, for a while longer anyway. So thank you guys. Let's get into it. First question is from Cyber ISO. Question for future video. What folder do you recommend for a fan of the Civivi Elementum with a flipper and liner lock micarta combo with a knife length of three and a quarter inches or longer budget limit 150? All right. So here is our Elementum right here. Very popular knife because uh, it hits a lot of things very well. You got a, a sub three inch blade, a price about 50 bucks, ball bearings, D2, nice flipper, and a type of an ergonomic, hesitate to use the word ergonomic because it is flat, um, but a neutral handle shape that's going to work for a lot of different hand sizes out there. Hits a lot of marks very well, but if you're looking for an upgrade from that, uh, the first thing that comes immediately to mind for me are some of the versions out there of the uh, Kaiser Gemini, which is a Ray Laconico design. Um, a few of them do have uh, car or, uh, micarta handles, including this new one right here with a black linen micarta that looks really cool. Uh, and this one only comes in at 75 bucks. Uh, the blade length is just is a little bit under three and a quarter. It's about three and an eighth, um, but it is a bit of a step up from that Elementum right there. You get a little bit more reach and I think a, a prettier, more refined looking shape to the blade overall. Uh, and I like a full flat grind like you have on here, especially when the blade stock is as thin as you get. And we've got N690 steel here, more stainless than the D2, uh, may not actually hold an edge longer. Um, I've never uh, put these two steels head to head myself, uh, but it's an excellent performing steel and it's put together exceptionally well also. Liner lock like you asked for, micarta, flipper. Yeah, really, really cool knives. Uh, you can step up even further and get uh, titanium versions uh, I think with S35VNs, more, so even more upgraded if you like the overall shape. Um, but th those don't come with uh, micarta handles at this point in time. Uh, and that was actually, I think, the, um, the hardest part uh, to kind of meet, the hardest part of the equation to meet what you were looking for. So I expanded out to some non micarta options. And this one is just over your budget at 154. Uh, but at that point, from us, you're getting free shipping anyway. So maybe it balances out a little bit. But this is the Lion Steel. Kerr. Very cool, uh, rugged feeling knife in the hand and might get you kind of the vibes you're looking for uh, for an upgraded Elementum. It's a bit of a stretch, but it's a cool knife, so I want to show it to you anyway. Um, this was kind of the best I found, uh, or at least in my mind, as a potential Elementum upgrade with the kind of blade length you were listen, looking for. It's about 3.4 inches. Uh, and we've got Sleepner steel, full flat grind, a little bit thicker. Uh, so there's more uh, durability here maybe than that Kaiser, uh, but you still have a decent cutting profile. G10 for the handles, there are a few different uh, options. There's some wood options as well. Inset liner lock and a flipper, crown spine, crown flipper tab, but it really rockets out quite nicely. You've got a deep carry pocket clip here on the right side, wire. Uh, it is reversible, but in order to actually reverse it, you actually have to take the knife apart. Um, not a huge deal since you'd only have to do it once really, but I've had to do that uh, for a customer at one point uh, on one of these knives and in taking it apart, the backspacer here is extremely solid and I've got a lot of confidence in the strength of this particular design. A little bit heavier uh, than your Elementum. This is about six ounces, just over six ounces. Uh, so it's not a lightweight, but it's definitely a very beefy, very cool knife. Um, and now for something of a little bit different. Actually, check out the uh, Mini Presidio from Benchmade. Again, the blade's not quite three and a quarter inches, but it, it kind of, in my mind, makes a, a compelling case for a, uh, a different Elementum or a, a, uh, a higher end uh, version of that similar knife pattern. 
really cool. These come in 123 for the minis right now. You got S30V blade steel, that drop point uh, profile, high flat grind. And what's cool about the uh, handles here is their CF Elite, which is a carbon fiber reinforced nylon material. Uh, so it's not quite black, it's kind of graphite, has some sheen to it, uh, and it looks pretty neat. And then of course, you've got the axis lock. So it's not a flipper, but you can still do flicky stuff like that. Um, and it'll close even quicker than any liner lock or frame lock out there. Definitely check that out as well. All right, next question is from Benjamin Coatsy. He says, how does one sharpen a convex edge in the field? Can one rely on a ceramic rod or small round file? Um, so I actually answered something similar to this way back in knife AQ number one, uh, taking care of convex edges. And we're specifically talking about uh, folks like Felic Neven or Bark River where they have a convex geometry that comes all the way down right to the edge. There's no secondary bevel right there at the tip. And so the short answer is, can you rely on a, uh, a ceramic rod or a, uh, you mentioned a file? Yes, you could, but you probably don't want to. Um, it will work, but you are going to alter the uh, kind of the geometry of that convex grind. You'll be putting a small secondary bevel on it with a hard, uh, hard sharpener. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is stick to strops, and I'm going to show you some field options since that's what you particularly um, asked about, and that's not something I specifically covered in the previous question. So stick with strops in general. Um, there's a couple of uh, field expedient options here. This one is from FlexCut. Uh, it's an eight inch by two inch wood block. It's a lightweight wood, so it's not gonna weigh you down. And it's got that leather here on the side. It comes in about 17 bucks. It does come with its own compound. You're gonna wanna load that leather up with the compound so that you can get a little bit of abrasiveness. You know, it's a fine abrasive, but still on the edge of that convex uh, blade as you move it back against the, uh, again, away from the edge. I did a, did a whole video on stropping techniques as well, so we'll leave a link to that also. Um, but anyway, it does come, like I said, with its own compound, but you can also uh, get this pack from Marbles if you wish. This comes, runs about 14 bucks, I wanna say, and it has various different grits, and it's got a uh, green and a black, which are the two that I like to use, black first and then green, and you could load half of this up with each, uh, or you could honestly make your own strop. This is a fairly simple thing. Um, so that's a fun project to do. Um, the only other thing I can think of right now, well, there's a few other things, uh, but one of the other nice things, and it is a bit expensive, is this unit from Benchmade. It's actually made for them by WorkSharp. It's the EDC Edge Maintenance Tool. Comes in about 50 bucks. And very easy to carry in the pocket. It's a very field expedient. And you've got a small leather strop here on the side loaded with black compound does have a ceramic rod there, which again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend for a convex edge, but it can be useful on some other stuff as well. So those are really cool. Um, barring that, they're, you know, for a lot of folks heading into the outdoors, you actually have a strop on you if you're wearing a leather belt. Um, and that works just for maintaining your edge for simple maintenance. Um, but anyway, check out that, uh, that stropping video we did. It'll show you the whole, uh, whole nine yards and the way you can actually turn a strop into a complete knife sharpening system, not just an edge finishing tool. So there you go. Hope, hopefully that helps you, sir. All right, next one is from Rebel Cause. This is an interesting, uh, an interesting conundrum that I've always faced here. Um, could you do an FAQ on the different grades of steel from the lowest to the highest in terms of edge retention and strength? I would love to, but honestly, it is so hard to even know where to begin. Uh, and I know that can be intimidating for folks just getting into the hobby. You know, even on the budget end of the spectrum, you could probably go around the building here and, and have everyone count out all the budget steals and we'd run out of fingers and toes to count them all on. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how to tackle that, if I'm quite honest, without, I'm, I'm a bit of a completionist um, on things like this, so it, it would drive me crazy to not talk about, you know, as much as I want to talk about it in that regard. Um, but what I will recommend um, is check out, uh, I don't often like to recommend a lot of outside sites here, um, but one I will is knifesteelnerds.com. They've got a lot of great uh, info on steels and they back it up with testing and documentation as well. They're not just you know keyboard warriors saying, oh, this is better than that and this is better than that. Um, which actually brings us to another point in terms of better. There's no best steel, um, that's a, a misnomer. One steel is gonna be really great at this thing, but really bad at another. In which case, 
another steel is going to be the best for that, but it's going to stink at something else. So take it as you will. Um, but that's a great website. It's not necessarily for the faint of heart. It, it does get kind of technical. Um, hopefully that helps you, even though I didn't. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, discuss in the comments anyway. Uh, thank you for the question though. You've asked it a couple times. I didn't want you to think uh, you were being ignored. So that's why I'm bringing it up today. All right, next question is from Complete Waste of Internet Bandwidth. You said it, not me. Um, I said, he says, I purchased the nice MKM magnetic sheath, but the Swiss Army knife I was going to put in it is too thick. Um, he says he likes the MKM Malga, but he doesn't need the tools. Um, so the meat of the question, what Swiss Army knife or other small multi-tool will fit the MKM sheath? It has a Phillips bit. I think the Tinker will, but would prefer the Super Tinker. All right, I haven't tested this out yet, so let's just, uh, let's just find out. Here's that MKM magnetic sheath he's talking about. A uh, real nice little leather ditty. Has a little spot there uh, to carry your, sh or your uh, small multi-tool. And the flap on the back is magnetic. So this is not exactly a belt sheath. It's designed to slip into your pocket uh, and the flap sits outside your pocket and holds via the magnet uh, through the fabric of your pants. Really cool little thing. Um, here is the Tinker and that definitely and easily fits in there. No problem. And I've also got a Super Tinker here. Let's check that out. So it's one extra layer of tools there. This is the, uh, the Winter Magic one that's out this year and this will be a bit tighter it is going to fit though. It's, it'll, uh, it's a bit tight at first, but it's not bad actually. Um, so that would work for you. Uh, and it'll definitely conform to the knife over time too, as you, as you actually carry it. Uh, so that's actually a pretty good fit once you get over the, uh, the, the magnet there. Uh, so that gives you a sta on a standard Celador, uh, 91 millimeter Swiss army knife, three layers of tools. And just for kicks, I've got our new exclusive farmer X, which is the aluminum Alox handle. That's got four layers of tools, but it's about the, it's a skosh thicker than that super tinker. So let's just try it real quick. Yeah, even that's gonna work not too bad for you. That might be about uh, topping, topping out though. I don't know if you could squeeze an extra layer in there. So that's, uh, if you're interested in that, that might be a good rule of thumb. Alox, four layers, Celador, three, good to go. But if you want one of those, they're really nice. Come in about 25 bucks. All right, two part question or uh, two questions from two different people um, that I'm gonna be able to answer at once. Jack the Ripper says, will you please do a knife on the best knives, the best knives for left-handers? Uh, and John Allison, I'm relatively new to the knife scene. I've been bitten by the bug for sure. I'm sorry, slash congratulations. Uh, I'm left-handed and never knew there were lefty friendly knives. Oh, knives again, he said knives again. Um, until I was introduced to the axis lock. Since then, I'm on a constant lookout for other locks. They're also great for lefties. Most seem to mimic the axis. Recommend other knives, other knives and or locks that are good for south paws. Yes, certainly. Um, well, obviously you already, you've already seen some axis lock stuff. Um, other folks that make a crossbar lock like Hogue, uh, Sog, even Gerber. It's a great option because it's a completely ambidextrous system. Typically they'll come with pocket clips that are uh, sw swappable to either side. And honestly, it's one of my favorite lock genres, actually probably my all time favorite lock genre. Um, it's easy to use, ambidextrous, quite nice. Um, but if you're looking for something different uh, and we will leave a link to our, we actually have a lefty section on our website that has not just dedicated left hand models um, like Chris Reeve and Spyderco especially are known for producing dedicated left hand models. Um, but actually a lot of Spydercos um, work well for righties or lefties that aren't dedicated uh, models, and that's their lockback models. And in fact, most lockbacks, uh, a lot of lockback models out there will work very well. Um, and I always use like the Delica as an example. So I wanted to pull something a little bit different this time around that we haven't uh, taken a look at for a while. So this is the Cali 3.5. Uh, this is a, uh, a more premium model, comes in just over 220 got a laminated blade with a ZDP 189 core. Uh, so really high edge retention going on there, albeit not entirely stainless. Um, but that's neither here nor there for what we're talking about. And that's uh, left hand friendliness. And again, not a dedicated uh, lefty model, but this is a completely ambidextrous design because the lockback, very easy to access with either hand. 
the one hand opening hole or what the thumb opening hole works easily with either hand and we've got a reversible pocket clip uh, and what we try to do in that lefty section on our website is anything like this that's completely symmetrical from left to the right so that a lefty is going to have the exact same experience as a right hander we make sure to include those in that section best we can um, and you'll find this in there at least i hope you should find this in there really cool knife you've got a uh, a decent grip it's about three and a half fingers here for me but you've got that choil for choking up really nice blade shape really good cutting geometry and this is just one of the uh the many spider goes that is going to give uh, a good option for you lefties now another option uh, a lot of button locks can sometimes be uh, good lefty options even though they're not dedicated for left handers uh, and as such you won't find knives like this in our lefty section uh, but it's worth talking about uh, this is the Hogue X1 Microflip on sale right now, actually, uh, while we're filming this for just 120, which is really nice. American made aluminum handles, CPM 154 blade, really good flipping action on top of it. Um, but you can access that with your left hand. Pardon my, uh, my clumsiness since I am not left-handed. Um, yeah, there we go. More clumsy. Um, some, this one's a little stiff, but some you can actually even flick close part way but definitely uh, not too bad for working with your left hand. All right, lastly, we've got a question from Kevin Reed. It says, hello, David. Hello, Kevin. I am looking for a budget EDC knife for a woman that's easy opening and closing, and she has arthritis. Um, funny story, uh, I pulled a couple of knives here that I thought might be cool, uh, completely forgetting that you asked for budget options, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, I'll show you these in a minute. Um, but this is another one I want to throw to the comment section. Uh, any of you folks out there that deal with arthritis, um, what do you guys look for? What works for you um, in terms of a knife that's going to work with your, your limited uh, or your, your, your joints, with your arthritis? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's a good learning opportunity for me as well. But I do have a couple things here to check out. Um, the first is one of the new Spider Codes. This is the Spy Opera. These come in about 175 right now. Um, just nice little EDC shape, uh, sub three inch blade, M390 steel and micarta and a lock back. Unfortunately, this is one of those spider codes that's not lefty friendly because that uh, pocket clip is one position only. Uh, but if you don't mind that being on the wrong side, it's still easy to operate. But the reason um, I thought this might be a good option is because even though it's a lock back, this is actually a pretty easy opening knife. There's not a lot of resistance um, to that opening action. Um, as to how it's going to work for arthritic hands, it might be a little tight. I'm not sure. Again, looking for some feedback, uh, folks. Um, but I actually have one other here um, up for discussion for you folks. Uh, and that's the new, um, small, or one of our new exclusive small Archeos from Artisan Cutlery. This is a non-locking knife. Uh, so there's no worry about having to actually disengage a locking mechanism um, which could be an issue. It's easy to push it in some way closed like so. And as far as opening action, the easiest way, well, the easiest way for folks without arthritis is the flipper, of course, but it's not bad to, if she, as long as you can still manage to pinch, you can open that blade very easily without a whole lot of resistance. And then for extra safety, you've got that steel pin, which can be inserted there. So you don't have to worry about uh, it closing on you so much. VG10 Damascus marbled carbon fiber on this one comes in about 120, uh, but we've got some $100 versions with uh, G10 and some pack of wood as well. Um, I think that might make a good option, but again, comment section, arthritic typers out there, help me out here, guys. Um, and that's it for today's Knife AQ. Thanks for everyone who's been submitting their questions. And if you want to, uh, you want the chance to get one of your own questions answered in a future installment, make sure to leave those in the comment section as well. In the meantime, we'll leave links to all these knives down there in the comments so you can get your hands on them if you want. And while you're over there at the Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so at least you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you put your money down on one of these. That's it for today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Don't forget to subscribe, folks. See you next time.